I remember when I started my booktube channel and I was just like, okay, I will throw this big party for myself if I ever make it to a hundred subscribers because I was convinced that nobody would want to like, you know, listen to me talk and chat for whatever amount of time because like there are so many other fun, interesting people on booktube for them to follow. And then I passed a hundred subscribers, I passed 250, I passed 500. And now I have passed a thousand subscribers. So, uh, yeah. But the very first video we're doing today is the drunk Q and A. Yay! I know, I know. I already started taking the Coke. Apologies. And no, I have not opened the bourbon yet. And for those that want you, like, Noria, I never took you as a bourbon girl. Um, I'm an alcohol girl. Who turns down alcohol? But because I am not adult enough, yeah, my mother has been making that complaint, you know. I was I was living in my house for over five, six years before I got curtains installed. Um, if you're wondering what I had in place of curtains, trust me, it's definitely the non curtainy thing you can find. But they were working until a couple of friends got me curtains as a birthday gift because, you know, it was just pathetic at that point in time. Adults have curtains. Adults apparently also have shot glasses, but I don't have shot glasses. I don't even have glasses. I only have mugs. So I figured, why not launch my uh, my King of Scars branded cup? One could put, one could plot violent espionage and still hope for dessert. Or in this case, one could get herself totally and completely sloshed and still hope people enjoy this video. So yes. Very long intro, but this is my 1,000 subscribers Q&A. Drunk Q&A. Hello everybody, Noria back again. Uh, let's just go right to it. Cheers to you, sir. This is what Evan tastes like. So the first question says, if someone wrote a book on your life, what would the title be? Noria drinks. Noria an extra bottle and an extra bottle of bourbon. <laughs> nah, I think I think if someone was to write a book of my life and it was to have a title I guess the title would be something full dip, you know, kind of like something like The woman within, you know, saying absolutely nothing but still trying to attempt deeper than it is because um, my life is just too complicated and I don't think anybody will capture it. But yeah, oh, oh, hmm. If someone was to write a book about my life, this is me being serious, and it was to get a title, I think the title would be Finding Noria because. Most of my life has been all about finding and discovering who I am and learning to accept that. And um, every time I get to a stage of my life and I think I know myself very well, something happens and I change a little and then I have to like start on another journey to rediscover this new version of me. So I'm constantly evolving, constantly changing. So that would be what my life story be about, finding me. Um, okay, so what is the best and worst thing about living in Nigeria? the best thing about living in Nigeria I would say it is the people um, Nigerians as a people they just inspire me every day you know to pursue my dreams to never give up to always bounce back it's so cool um, but what is the worst thing about living in Nigeria I would say is also the people because they can be very petty very narrow-minded um, very aggravating you know um, thriving and relishing in their ignorance and bigotry so uh yes nigerians as a people we are like two sides of the same coin so who's your number one fictional crush you know for the longest time i thought i knew the answer to that um turns out i don't but like okay 
my number one fictional crush in the sense that as at right now um has to be Evelyn Hugo yes my number one fictional crush as of right now is Evelyn Hugo she is gorgeous she's cunning she's smart she's ambitious she's relentless and she's just Evelyn Hugo is just goals so I know a lot of people are like seriously that bitch but I want that bitch to be my bitch so yes who is your number one OTP that's simple that's easy Kaz and Ined at of Six of Crows, like seriously, sure they cannot touch, sure Kaz can be a real dick, sure Ined is sometimes too good for him, but they just, together they make magic, together they make me feel things, together they make me fall in love with the thought of love, like Kaz and Ined, I'm telling you. And they didn't need no sexing or kissing to get me to that point. Like, their goals, superior. What are some hobbies you have outside of reading and bookish things? Okay, so, um, I think I have said it before, but I do like, I do play PS4. I'm a gamer. Um, I, okay. Writing does count as bookish things. So, other than gaming and reading and writing, is there any other thing? Of course, watching TV, like, who doesn't watch TV, but I watch TV. Um, I'm particularly a fan of um, Asian entertainment, so, um, yes, I listen to K-pop, I watch K-dramas, I watch C-dramas, Jodoramas, you know, Taiwanese dramas, you name it. Um, yes, huge fan of, huge fan of K-pop. Um, Big Bang is my favorite band ever. Um, which makes this whole thing with Songri very heartbreaking. What is your fondest memory? Ooh, okay. Ah, uh, shit. <laughs> My fondest memory. Do I have one? Cause sometimes I just think that like I was traumatized a lot as a child. So do I have a, my fondest memory? So a point in my life where I look back and I smile and I feel complete and absolute bliss. I would say it's when I was in uni. My first year of university, I just met the girl who would become my best friend and who has stayed my best friend for the last 10 years. She knows me better than I know myself. Um, I think that would be my fondest. My fondest memory was lying on that bunk because we were roommates in uni, in my university campus, and um, was lying on those bunk beds. And she was across from me. We both had our headphones on, we we're both looking at our laptops, and we we're both catching up on Naruto. It was the scene where Orochimaru tries to steal Sasuke's body and Sasuke is like nah bitch and leaves him and um, I remember we both watched that, we were both watching that scene like, on our laptops and then we raised our heads, we looked at each other, we grinned and then we went back to watching and like, it just, it was the period of my life where I had all the independence of an adult without any of the responsibilities so it was definitely one of my fondest moments compared to right now where Adulthood sucks and adulthood is expensive. Just saying. Hmm. Next question is What's the number one anticipated book for 2019? <sighs> like, I have one book that is actually, I have several books that are my brand, um, but one book is currently reigning supreme, and that is The Poppy War by Eric Kwong. So, my number one anticipated book of 2019 is the sequel to The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang, which is The Dragon Republic by R.F. Kuang. And um, initially it was meant to come out in July slash August, you know, because I'm an August baby and I was like, holy shit, it's coming out in my month. It's the best, it's the most amazing birthday present, blah, 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 blah. And now it has been moved to September, which is heartbreaking because... sad but yes that's my most anticipated book of 2019 the next question okay adriana says um favorite six of crows character 
bitch. How the fuck am I meant to pick one? Like, those are my babies. You're like telling me, choose one of your babies. Sacrifice the rest at the altar of the gods. Only one shall survive. <laughs> okay, fine. If I was to absolutely choose, and I had no choice, I would go with Inej Gaffa because it's an edge. You know, she has all the goodness we want in the world, along with the viciousness and the bloodthirstiness that makes my heart happy. So, uh, yes, Inej. Um, so, um, Emma asks, is, Emma asks, what the fuck is ask is? Emma asks, 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 English is a complicated language. Emma asks, Emma says, favorite Nigerian writer. Okay, so, mm, mm, mm. ouch. Hmm. I thought that, you know, something might have happened and the list might have changed, but, uh, no, it stays the same. My favorite Nigerian author has to be Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. I still blame it on Americana because if she had not written a book that saved my life, she might not have made it to this list, but she did, so she's number one. Okay, so, um... <laughs> Kerry says, sexiest love interest you've ever read about. Ooh, sexy. Let's get it on. I got feeling. What's the rest of the lyrics of that song? I don't know. Let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about all the good things and the bad things that may be. Let's talk about sex. Okay, so sexiest love interests. Hmm. It has to be recent because. I've read about way too many sexiest love interests for me to keep count of everything. So, I would say the sexiest love interest in a book I read in the last six months is definitely Resand of A Court of Mist and Fury and A Court of War. In fact, Resand of the Akutar series. How I Sexy and Resand is one of the most powerful fairy ever. So, yes, so it's. A combination of the span of his wings and the depth of his powers. So, yeah. What's a character you really love and why? This is some deep ass questions, okay? Oh. One of my favorite characters, a character I really like, has to be um, Otensha James of The Woman Next Door. She's an 80 year old woman who is angry and who will take no shit. And you know, she has that sternness. She has that sternness of personality that makes you think that, oh, she's so hard and stuff until you find out that her husband cheated on her, like, has been cheated on her since shortly after they got married and she's been dealing with that and hiding with that and trying to keep her pride and her person in check. And I just, I love the fact that she's unapologetically a bitch. She's unapologetically a bitter old woman, but I won't really call her bitter, just angry. She's unapologetically angry and she's always quick to say exactly what it's on her mind and as much as Marion detests it you can always count on Ontensha to tell you the truth even if it is painful of course she usually tell you the truth in the most painful way possible because that woman does not know anything about the word mercy and that is why I love her because she's merciless and vicious and angry and wise and also vulnerable because um when you find out that your husband has been cheating on you for most of your marriage it just it does stuff to you so cheers to tesha mm. where's one place you want to travel to man do i have to choose because i want to go to so many places i want to visit i want to go to marrakesh i want to visit turkey i want to go to fiji um i want to go to um 
I want to go to Saint Tropez. I want to go to Seychelles. I want to go to um, Rome. You know, um, Rome, Venice, Venice. Um, I want to see the Colosseum. I want to also go to Naples. I want to see um, the Isle of Capri. Um, I want to visit Tokyo, um, Seoul, Hong Kong. Um, you know. I just more the Maldives. I want to. I want to travel the world. I want to see the world. But if I was to choose one place, I would say. Um, I want to see the Taj Mahal. I want to see this great, epic structure that was built as one of the purest forms of a love story. And I just, uh, yeah, I know slaves built it which kind of like takes away from the majesty and the romance of the moment but i still want to visit the taj mahal and it says do you have next it says do you have any pets no i do not although i do plan on getting a kitten sometime this year so um yeah uh i'm actually looking forward like i've wanted a cat I wanted a kitten since like forever. I like I love cats, um, and I've just been worried because one, I don't have a mothering bone in my body, as gorgeous as that body said body is. But I don't have a mothering bone in my body, and I um, my apartment, my current apartment is too small. I do have plans of getting a bigger apartment, so that is the only consolation right now. So, hmm. favorite color. My favorite colors, are, I actually have two favorite colors, um, black and red, just in case you can't tell because I, I wear a lot of black and I love red, like those are my two favorite colors, undisputedly, undoubtedly, I know it's very cliche for people to be like, oh, black is my favorite color, but I just, I gravitate towards that color, it's one of my favorite. Um, okay, so Capri says, what's your favorite candy? My favorite candy, interestingly enough, is probably... Um, Maltesers I don't know Like I like popping them in the freezer and having them freeze And then I just like lay them on like The roof of my tongue And I just like keep them there for a while until they warm up And then slide and rub against them Until it slowly dissolves and melts in my mouth Like I love Maltesers If you could be any celebrity Who would it be? G-Dragon G-Dragon of Big Bang Just because he's just creative and intense and amazing and smart and gorgeous and you know like funny and sweet and kind like it just it if i could be anybody i would choose Wonji young aka g dragon okay um spit or swallow seriously Kenfrey? i definitely would choose swallow i would swallow every god damn and now you have me thinking about IMX and I need to listen to Spit or Swallow again. Um, who's your bookish boyfriend? Currently, at this exact moment in time, we stand. Exact moment in time, we stand. Mm. Fave smart book you've ever read. Oh. Oh, Ooh la la. Hmm. Favorite smart book I have ever read. This is going to be interesting because see, if we're talking MM romance, you know, male male romance. The favorite, my favorite smart I've ever read so far, it, from that genre has to be from Cali, Charlie Cochet's, um, what's the name of her? A third series, third series, yes, Brody, mm. Sloan Brody, Dexter J. Daly, yes, so, yes, um, Sloan and Dexter scenes were pretty, Um, but hmm. which, by the way, leads me to because it just forgot to me that 
a lot of the time when I read FF romances, it's always very chaste. Recommend me some smutty female and female romance, please. I would really appreciate it. But if I was to say, so I've said MM romances, if I was to say a male female romance, smut, but favorite smut, like, mm, 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 mm. I felt the type of smut. Ooh. It's been a while since I like really read a smutty book. But I would say like the very first set of the Archangel series by Nalini, by Nalini Singh had quite a lot of singe-worthy <laughs> singe scenes. Um, I've stopped reading the series just because I got annoyed with the series and uh, yep. But yeah, I, I would say yeah, Archangel series had some pretty hot, smutty, sexy scenes. Yeah. If you were just thinking, oh my god, what the fuck, Noria? Like, if Risan is your book boyfriend, what the fuck did you not choose a, a, a Court of Thorns and Roses series? And I'm like, I'm sorry, like, sure, she, she was really smutty, but, um, let's call it spade is spade. One, it was smutty because it was listed under YA. Like, it was that outrageously smutty because it was listed under YA. If it had been listed under erotica, like adult romance and stuff, like. I've read spicier photo scenes. Just. Mm. Okay, so. How do you curve someone you don't like? Capri! Mm. Mm, mm, mm. I've ever curved somebody I don't like. like. I do that all the time. I'm trying to remember if I have a particular modus operandus. Um, do I? Do I? Do I? Usually I just ignore their calls. I ignore their calls. I ignore their texts. Like, I respond to their texts once every four months. Like, I set my alarm. Like, I set it in my calendar to respond to the message they sent once every four months. And usually it just goes like, yo, respond to this person's message. And I go, oh, hi, sorry, been busy. Like, nothing personal, nothing whatever. Just, hi, sorry, been busy. And then usually they respond and I give, like, I stretch out communication to curve somebody like if it is that you cannot tell from the fact that it takes me two weeks to respond to your message that I'm just not interested then the fuck are you doing like the fuck didn't nobody tell you how to curve they nobody tell you how to look for signs of you being curved like seriously but that's just it mm. I know very boring but just space out the communication that is my role my number one role do not text them or message them or call them. Like, just make it like once every other month. Not even every month. Once every other month. Eventually, they will move on. And if they don't move on, all the best. Um, how many videos have you filmed and never posted? Ooh, okay. So, um, I tend to post a lot of the videos I film. Because it just kind of reminds, like, I use that as a way to measure my progress. So, when I go back to my old videos that I might have been tempted not to post, I'm like, oh my god, I've, like, done so much better. Like, I make more sense. I at least try to, you know, that kind of thing. And, um, yeah. But I did film a video that I never, in fact, I actually uploaded the video. And then I just, I deleted it. And that was, I did a small booktuber shout out, but I recorded it at a time when I was not mentally in the states to record it so i just kept making mistakes i kept um mispronouncing everybody's names i kept mixing up everybody's channels and you could just tell that i was a right mess in that video and i'm like although this thing is uploaded and ready to post i just i couldn't do it so i deleted the video and i recorded a separate video so uh yes just one video um, the small booktube, the small booktubers shout out video. Capri still says, if you were a dragon, what would your dragon name be? And what color would you be? Excellent question, So, Color would definitely be red and black. Like, if you're surprised, show of hands, you know. Um, yes, so... Definitely, like I said, definitely red and black. What would my dragon name be? Fury. 
I think my dragon name will be Fury. You know, as an homage to the Furies and because my anger slash rage is what would, you know, spur me on to victory. So the next question says, where were you born? I was born in the largest city in West Africa. In other words, I was born in Nibada. Would you have sex in a library? See, that's a tricky question because... Hmm. No. Just because I have a lot of respect for the library. Like, that's the only thing that will keep me from having sex in the library. Like, I can make out in the library, but not actual sex because um, I have too much respect for the library. Now, if you were asking the strangest places I've had sex in, then that would be another conversation because your girl has had sex on the highway. And when I say on the highway, I mean... The car was speeding and in motion. There was a period in my life when I was a goddamn idiot. Like, let's just lay that out there. And I've also had sex in on a balcony in the evening, like around 6 p.m.-ish. So it wasn't like it was dark. If you stepped out of your house, if you stepped out onto your balcony, you could see me on mine getting some. But did I care? No.